Why, hello there! And welcome back to our Harmony Only Challenge. In the last episode, we summoned for Hanya and got ridiculously lucky in the worst possible ways for this account. Don't believe us? Take a look for yourselves while we go put on our clown makeup. And with all that pain of rolling for Hanya on the Argenti and Silver Wolf banners, we did manage to come away with a few Harmony Light Cones, a E1 Hanya, and a E2 Asta. So armed with our new upgrades, it's time to overcome this newest hurdle that's plagued us for weeks. But before we get into it, if you could go down and leave us a like, comment, and subscribe, it would mean the world to us. But without further ado, let's get into the episode. Picking up where we left off, we jump straight back into the Blaze Out of Space boss fight. And armed with a brand new teammate, and renewed hope we absolutely. Actually, no. We're not going to finish that sentence, because seeing is believing. Hey, Clara? Are you hurt? Th thanks, everyone. I'm fine. Just a few scratches. You shouldn't be running around by yourself. It's too dangerous. What are you looking for here? There is a fault with one of the energy supply units at the base. If I don't repair it soon, everyone at the settlement will be affected. I knew there was a workshop in this town, so I wanted to try my luck here. I found all the components I need, but then I ran into a monster. You guys saved me. I'll tell Mr. Svarag about it. Huh? What do you need to see him for? I can pass him a message. No. This time, we need to set things straight with him face to face. Can you take us to meet him? But... Mr. Sparg doesn't like talking to others, especially Wildfire. <laughs> Don't I know it. But he's evaded communication with us for too long. This time, we have to see him. Um... I know you're working hard for the people down here, but Mr. Sparg doesn't trust human emotions. He only trusts his calculation results. So, I can't take you to see him. If Mr. Svarag and you had a fight, someone would get hurt for sure. Maybe even bystanders. Listen, kid, you- uh, Clara, you said it yourself before, right? Svarag's duty is to protect the underworld and preserve the civilization here. We have the same wish. Why would he refuse to cooperate with us? I know, Mr. Sora. 
He isn't affected by other people's wishes. He only follows logical judgments. Terrible things are happening on this world. Mr. Svarok thinks that the overworld will end soon. What? According to his calculation results, the strength of the Underworlders won't be enough to prevent the disaster. His plan is to keep the Underworlders away from the source of the disaster, so they can survive for longer. Isn't that just putting us in a cage? It's ridiculous! What difference does it make if our death gets postponed a couple of days? How is that better than putting up a fight? I'll definitely return the favor, but not like this. Um, if you don't mind, I still have important things to do. I'll go back now. Clara! It's no use, Zila. She's made up her mind. I could tell from her expression. You will have to think of another way. As you saw from that boss fight, getting Hanya was just the power boost we needed for this run, with her own personal damage being quite respectable and her skill increasing the amount of damage that enemies take by a percentage. We are now fully prepared for any issues bosses pose going forwards. And with that victory under our belt, we have a team meeting with March and Dan Hang about the conversation we had with Clara while trying to brainstorm ideas on how we can proceed. And in the end, it become painfully obvious that trying to go around Clara to meet Svarag will only end poorly. But during the conversation with Clara, Dan Heng noticed she mentioned Svarag's calculations and how he stubbornly sticks to them. And with a stroke of genius, we realize that the only way for us to leave the underworld and save Jirilo 6 is if we prove to Svarag that we are uncone variable. But in order to prove to Svarag that we are a unknown variable in his calculations, we must first complete something equally as challenging, and that is convincing Clara. So with our goal set, we head back to the Vagrant's camp in order to find Clara, and after following her and putting the smack down on the local robots, we finally catch up with Clara, who is trying to fix a broken generator. Hmm... Why won't it... Ah... I can't figure it out! Oh, it's you. You came with me after all. You keep saying that, but... Are you repairing this installation, Clara? Hit a snack? Huh? How did you know? The dimensions and wear of these two roller components look very different from the rest of the unit. You must have only just replaced them. You replaced the damaged components, but the unit isn't starting up as normal. That's what you're trying to figure out, right? Yeah! I fixed a lot of things before, but I never had to repair one as complicated as this. Why isn't Svarog helping you? I don't want to disturb him. This installation was... accidentally damaged by two of the vagrants. If Mr. Svarog finds out, they'll get in big trouble. You know, Clara, if you're too kind... People can take advantage of you. Ah... I think I found the source of the problem. You replaced the rollers, but the bearing is causing a jam. And there's a misalignment. You two, give me a hand. We should be able to fix it between us. More fixing? I'm getting good at this! Can we really fix this? Relax, we got this. Right, Don Hung? Less asking, more helping. Whoa, it 
it lit up. Thanks, guys. <laughs> no need. We hardly lifted a finger. So, the settlement's energy supply problem is solved for the time being? Yes. The people on the outskirts don't need to worry about heat or light now. Um... I understand. You helped a lot of injured people in the mine, and you risk going into the town for supplies. You're good people. If there's any other way I can help you, I'll do my best. But this... Uh, how are we gonna convince her? very different from other people. Right! That's because we're not from here. We've never been a factor in Svarog's calculations. And if those calculations are based solely on the strength of the Underworlders, then the results don't apply to the present situation. When did Svarog start doing his calculations, Clara? It was... a long time ago. The same time the Underworld was sealed off. I think... Circumstances have changed since then. There's a Silver Mane Guard down here now. Is that part of Svarog's calculation? Not to mention we're... There's just no way that Svarog's calculations would have included variables like us, you know? Different planet? Don't treat me like a child. Those are just made-up stories that grown-ups like to tell. I don't... Hey. He and March aren't lying, Clara. I believe them. Branya... Do you really...? I know how you feel, Clara. You want new hope for the underground, but you don't want anyone to get hurt in the process, right? I also have doubts, but my gut tells me that March, Dan, Hung, and he, they are the new hope this world has been waiting for. Let them meet Svarag, and let's see if his calculation result is any different for you, for him. There's no harm in trying, right? Hmm... I... <sighs> okay, I'll take you to see Mr. Svarog. Really? Awesome! Mm, I understand now. Trying to change Mr. Svarog's mind on my own would take forever. Even if I kept trying until I was all grown up, I don't think I could do it. And all the while, people would be getting sick. Losing their homes and... Fighting, just like in the mine. I don't want that to happen. If you guys really believe that you can convince Mr. Svarog, then I need to be brave too. Everyone, follow me. After helping out Clara and convincing her to finally let us meet with Svarog face to face, we head on over, where after the following cutscene we do something that makes us laugh to this very day. What is that you may ask? Well, it wouldn't be any fun if we spoiled it now, would it? I'm back, Mr. Svarok. I see that the energy supply system is back online. Thank you, Clara. But why have you brought them? Mr. Svarok, they want to talk to you about going to the surface. 
Analyzing. Analysis result. Target does not belong to wildfire. Background, unknown. Classification, unknown. You have arrived on Clara's recommendation. I will give you an opportunity to speak. Oh, uh, hey, sounds like he's willing to communicate. Quick, time to smooth talk him. You seek peace. Understood. Nevertheless, your statement is unilateral. My position will be determined after assessing the result of our negotiation. Proceed with your central point. Do not waste this world's valuable time. Uh, he cut you off completely. This guy. Stay focused. Remember, we have to make him see that we're a variable in the calculation. Stellaron. Searching database. Access denied. Discussing Stellaron with unauthorized targets. Prohibited. You are broaching a secret that lies at the heart of this world. A secret that should remain unknown to humanity. Reassessing targets. Threat index raised. I demand that you reveal your true intention. As expected. He knows of the Stellaron. But it's a restricted topic. We've come this far. Out with it already! Just be straight with him. Everything depends on it. Historical records state that humanity has already made multiple efforts to engage with the Stellaron. Without exception, these efforts have been motivated by human greed. Attempts to secure the article for a selfish end. As instructed by the architects, any attempt to engage with the Stellaron will result in grave consequences. Reassessing. Target threat index critical. Uh, what should we do? This is going from bad to worse. There is no evidence to suggest you are an exception. Calculation result remains unchanged. Peacekeeping protocol temporarily disengaged. Requesting extermination protocol launch. E extermination In the literal sense? Peace talks are over. March. Prepare for combat. Mr. Sparog, please don't. Leave, Clara. Clara, it's dangerous here. Find somewhere to hide. <sighs> Looks like we have to take action after all. Prototype number three. Monitoring Automaton Svarag. Extermination protocol launch. Successful. Annihilation permitted. While we take on Svarag, Let's have a quick discussion about this boss. Firstly, this fight is made up of two parts. The first phase of this fight is much like a part in part two of this challenge. Where Swarag has to take a certain amount of damage to their health in order to progress into phase two. Now, getting into Swarag himself, Swarag has three major abilities and one basic attack where he will punch the player his first ability is a damaging single target laser, which can be troublesome at low health. His second ability can summon up to two giant mechanical hands that can not only attack alongside him, but actually take away and seal one of your teammates for a set number of turns, preventing you from using them in battle. And finally, his most deadly ability. Svarag can call on a bombardment of missiles to damage the whole team, these missiles are not only strong, but can also hit multiple times, which proves lethal at times. <laughs> How can you put up your best fight without a doctor on the battlefield? All of you, stay focused. I'm right behind you. Nat! How did you... 
Guess you guys had a bad talk, huh? Luckily, Sampo's got your back. Sampo! <laughs> I knew you'd be involved somehow. Base breached. Armed wildfire personnel detected. Assessing. All subjects are high-risk individuals. Commencing complete annihilation. Now, with all that said, to say Sfarag was a difficult fight for this account would just be a lie, as it only took us 2 minutes and 30 for seconds to defeat him, which is the fastest boss time we have had in this challenge so far. Which we found to be pretty funny. But that's enough from us, enjoy the rest of the fight. Damn. Hey, young man, you got knocked the fuck out. wish right now is for everyone to work together like like family recently I learned something new calculation results can't always bring people happiness even if the world outside the cage isn't beautiful people still want to know what it's like assessment system reset successful Processing variables. Variable 1. Clara's request. Variable 2. Outsider's intentions. Updated assessment result. Transference of decision-making authority to outsiders. Outsiders are granted access to Stellaron intelligence. So... So we did it? Yeah, without her, even if we defeated Sparog, there's no way he'd have given us access to the intel, right? I hope his memory bank really does contain data on the Stellaron. Is this it, Nat? Us? Wildfire? The Underworld? Did... Did we win? No, Zila. Our battle. Their battle. It's just beginning. Finally made it to this point. Uh, 
What's up? Nervous? No. But... I do have an aching feeling in my chest. I'm ready. Reveal the truth. I'm listening. I have finished collating the Stellaron data and records. Do you wish to proceed, outsiders? Requesting database materials cache, serial number 13175, encryption level highest. Request approved. Transmission. This is the fruit of many years of research, Madam Guardian. The evidence is irrefutable. This so-called Stellaron is the source of all the destruction. The people will struggle to accept this conclusion, Doctor. If we were to tell them that the almighty Elisa Rand activated this thing and triggered the eternal freeze... It's the truth, madam. The truth won't change with the opinions of the people. The reports before you are the precious result of painstaking effort on the part of Bellabog's greatest scholars. You must trust the weight of its conclusion. I have never doubted you, Doctor. On the contrary, I am resolute in the face of this conclusion. From the moment I took up this mantle, that voice, their voice, has made its home in my mind. I cannot shake them. I shouldn't be telling you this. Let's return to your research, Doctor. I'm afraid I cannot make these reports known to the public. Unless... Unless? Unless what? Please, proceed, madam. Unless you have found a way to completely destroy the Stellaron. I understand. In the name of preservation, I will fulfill this mission. Cache number 13175. Transmission complete. Next transmission. Cache number 24830. I don't understand, Doctor. Why do we have to hide such valuable research results away? They're the work of a lifetime. You're... you're still young, child. There will come a day... A day when you do understand. The Supreme Guardian... She... She sees further than you or I. All the decisions are, are for the security of Malabarg. I just think it's a shame. Our research has hit an obstacle. Meanwhile, your results will be buried in the snow. <laughs> don't, don't be upset, child. You, you still have lots of time ahead of you. When you find a way to destroy, <coughs> destroy the Stellaron, our efforts will have been worth it. Cache number 24830. Transmission complete. Next transmission. Cache number 57614. This is... Why is there a robot here? During his life, this was Dr. Mearsheimer's personal robot bodyguard. I heard it's a prototype from the Great War. Since the doctor and his assistants passed away, it's remained here. It hasn't moved an inch. Oh, I see. Let's start. We must unearth the doctor's research conclusions. All of them. Madam Guardian, I've found them. All the documents are here. Hmm. Good. That'll do. Madam Guardian, what should we do with the robot? Uh, it would seem a great waste to destroy it. 
Find someone to reset its system, and then arrange for it to be sent to the Underworld. I hear that the development group is in need of a robot with defense capabilities. Yes, madam. I'm sorry, doctor. But these results must be taken care of by the architects. One day, somebody will be able to carry out your behest. Cache number 57614. Transmission complete. Concluding data transmission. So, the truth is clear now, right? <sighs> And it would appear that they never succeeded. Now only one question remains. Why would Kokolia exhibit such a sudden change in her attitude towards us? Branya? Are you okay? I'm, I'm fine. I just... I feel a little faint. Why? Why, Mother? Maybe, maybe she wasn't aware. Maybe she... I'm sorry. It's no use lying to yourself, Branya. It's time for you to make a decision. Hey, can I have a word with you? I know that we'll need time to process this new information, but we have to decide on our next plan as soon as possible. So with Svarog down for the count, we talk to Natasha, who up until now has been keeping from us that she is the real leader of Wildfire, and thanks us for clearing a way up to the surface and providing a new hope for the citizens of the Underworld. And so, with our mission complete and peace restored, we head back to Boulder Town, and that is where it happened. Equilibrium. The universe should be in equilibrium. Yes, equilibrium. The Arbiters of the Equilibrium are giving you a trial. For the Equilibrium of all worlds, you must demonstrate your strength. The strong will be given greater opportunities. The weak, a chance to breathe. Passing the trial will prove that your strength has shaken the scales of power. Worlds will change, and thus, equilibrium. You will encounter stronger enemies, harder puzzles, and greater rewards. After equilibrium, you will go on to face yet more trials. You will obtain more, more of the material, more of the spiritual, more of the countable, more of the immeasurable. What is obtained will be in proportion to your strength, and thus in equilibrium. It is your choice to make, but in the end, equilibrium will be upheld. Equilibrium. It is for this that all worlds change.
Welcome everybody to Equilibrium Levels. Now, if you have not progressed this far into the story, or have just started playing, you're probably wondering what exactly are Equilibrium Levels. Well, simply put, if you're a veteran of Genshin Impact, you will know this mechanic better as World Level. But do not worry, even if you have not played Genshin Impact, we will give you all a quick Equilibrium Crash Course, so starting off, equilibrium levels determine how easy or hard enemies and bosses are out in the world. But it's also the deciding factor on the amount of materials acquired from Calyxes. So with that information, if we take the credit Calyx as a prime example, without equilibrium levels, the minimum amount of credits you can earn for completing one round is 9,500, while completing six rounds can earn you a maximum of 57,000. Now, if we compare the value to the same Calyx at Equilibrium Level 1, the amount of credits earned from completing one wave turns to 12,500, while completing six waves will earn you 75,000. This works out to a 31% increase in credits just from leveling the Equilibrium Level up once. For those interested, here is the amount of gains in the credit Calyx for each Equilibrium Level gain. But leveling up the Equilibrium level not only gives you more resources from the Calyxes, it also increases the rarity of materials dropped by all enemies and bosses, but also opens up various boosts and systems that allow you to increase your character's power levels to even greater heights. Such as increasing the maximum amount of technique points that you can use during open world exploration, as well as opening up dedicated calyxes for leveling up character traces and stagnant shadows, which allow you to ascend your units even further. And finally, but most importantly, relic crafting. Here's a breakdown of everything you can gain from the various equilibrium levels. Thank you for listening. That will be about everything you need to know in our Equilibrium Crash Course. So now, we will return you to your normally scheduled programming. Ah, <sighs> well, now that we're done with that whole situation in the underworld, we can finally look for the Stellaron. <sighs> but thinking about it, I feel a bit bad about Clara. We promised her that our talks with Sparog would go peacefully. You tried your best. Don't blame yourself. I should have considered such a situation in advance. And it was Sparog who attacked first. We didn't have any other choice. I didn't mean for you guys to start beating yourselves up over it. Look on the bright side. Things turned out all right, didn't they? Now everyone knows that the real problem here is the Stellaron, and they're willing to help us out. All in all, the mission is going super smoothly. But we still have a lot left to figure out. For instance... That's not of foremost concern. What's important is that we still don't have the exact location and coordinates of the Stellaron, nor have we figured out the reason behind Kokolia's sudden change in attitude. 
We still haven't put all of the pieces together. Dreams? Oh, I remember you mentioned something about strange dreams before. Hmm. All three dreams were the same. With Kokolia and that other voice. It would be weird to call it a coincidence. I'm wondering if these dreams aren't just random. If there's some meaning behind them. Huh. Maybe you're having them because... Because of the Stellaron inside him? That's my hunch. But I have no proof. <sighs> well, then that's as good as nothing for now. So, what should we do when we get back above ground? After all this talk, we're still back at square one. We solve a puzzle one piece at a time. Let's get some rest. We'll talk to Wildfire tomorrow and get to the bottom of this. Also, there's still one more key character we haven't talked to yet. Her connection to Kokolia may be the key to cracking this mystery. After defeating Swarag and talking with March and Dan Hang, we return to our room in the Gota Hotel at Natasha's request, and finally settle down for some well-deserved rest. However, as we rest our eyes, a promise between two friends is made somewhere else in the underworld. Over there. See that? That used to be the worst street in Rivet Town, and it's also where I grew up. My friends and I used to wander those streets, thinking about where to find our next meal. That is, until Chief Oleg got me out and took me to the orphanage. There, I learned to read and write from Natasha. At the age of 10, I started to patrol the mines with Oleg, occasionally getting into fights with the local thugs. Oh, that sounds nice. Nice? Are you being sarcastic with me? Oh, no, sorry. Life in the underworld is difficult. I shouldn't be speaking about it so lightly. Ugh. You're always so serious. It really gets on people's nerves sometimes, you know? Uh, right. Uh, what I meant was... Uh, I kind of envy you, Zila. For as long as I can remember, my days have been an endless cycle of studying, etiquette lessons, and training. Every day, all I hear is, Remember who you are, Bronya. This is against the Architect's admonishments, Bronya. Ladies shouldn't use such foul language, Bronya. <laughs> Some may envy this kind of life, but I have felt trapped. When every choice and every goal has already been made for you. <laughs> you probably can't imagine how that feels. No, I can't. But more importantly, what kind of foul language are you using? In the name of the Architects, I shall stick this spear into your nostril. <laughs> that's it? <laughs> oh, that's nothing. Looks like I'll have to teach you some underworld slang before you go back. <laughs> no. No, that won't be necessary. <laughs> It'll be better than poking people's nostrils, at least. <sighs> I never thought that I'd be here having a heart-to-heart -heart with the future Guardian. As a kid, I didn't meet many people who lived in the overworld. I only heard stories from the grown-ups and figured you were all just a bunch of cold snobs. I've heard from some Silvermane veterans that before the orders were made to seal off the underworld from the overworld, there was no difference between the two places. Everybody ate the same food, chatted about the same topic, celebrated the same festivals. Even though times are different now, things like the joys and sorrows of life, the ties between people, these precious things must certainly still connect us all. There is a way to bridge the gap between the two worlds. We can definitely go back to the time when you and I were not divided. 
when we could stand side by side against the Eternal Freeze and the Fragmentum. <laughs> I'm not like you. I don't have that many grand plans for the future. But if that's the future you want, I'm willing to build this bridge with you. Thank you, Zila. Your trust is very important to me. Speaking of which, um, what are you going to do next? What Svarog revealed must have made quite an impact, huh? Yes. I thought I was prepared for anything, but... As long as I am the Guardian's successor, those truths will come out sooner or later. Why does my mother hide it from me, and why does she want me to hunt down the outsiders who know about the nature of the Stellaron? It just... It doesn't make sense. I thought it over. There's only one thing I can do. Go ask her directly. You... Hold on. You're not really going, are you? A alone? You can't. This plan is... I've already thought it through, Zila. I am Madame Kokolia's daughter. That will never change. Be it my duties as her heir or as a Silvermane guard, I must face my problems head on. Even if... Branya. This is for you, Zila. Please help me pass it on to the outsiders. If... If I am unable to see you again, They'll know what to do. Okay, I understand. You've made up your mind, and there's nothing I can say that will change it. But, remember this. If you run into trouble, I will come to save you, no matter what. Then I'll be waiting for you. <laughs> so, did you come to this spot when you were a child? Of course. I just didn't appreciate how nice it was at the time. <sighs> Very nice. So after enjoying a peaceful night's rest, the next morning, we meet up with March and Den Heng, and after reporting no abnormal dreams, we decide to meet up with Wildfire to discuss the next step in the plan. Oh, look who's here. It's the Bane of Svarog, the big hero of the Underworld. And the other big heroes, Dan Hung and March 7. Were those lines rehearsed? Where's Natasha? Is she here? She has a bunch of other things to attend to, so I hope you don't mind talking to this <clears throat> old man instead. I speak on behalf of Natasha. By the way, sorry for keeping that whole thing about her being the actual leader of Wildfire a secret. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> My apologies. Natasha is always cautious, but she has no ill intent, as you must have noticed. She told me to make sure you return to the overworld safely. I gave it some thought, and I think the safest way is to ask this fellow for help. I brought you down. I can take you back up. Free of charge. Satisfaction guaranteed. There's no need to knock us out this time, right? Of course not. This time, we'll go back through the furnace core. Well, for my sparkling companionship, of course. <laughs> I jest, I jest. The path has been blocked for over ten years, and very few know how to get through. That's where I come in. Ugh, enough chatter. Just be a good guide. Hold on. What about Branya? Why isn't she here? She already went back. As you know, she has some things to settle with the Supreme Guardian. What? She just ditched us and went back? 
How could you let her? Exactly. She has a lot of responsibilities. I don't completely understand, but I trust that she's trying to solve the problem. Oh, right. Branya told me to give you this. She left us a letter. Hmm. Could this be one of those open in case of emergency letters? I've never gotten one of those before. Should we wait until we run into something dangerous? Stop overthinking and just open it. Brother and sister Landau? I know the brother must refer to Jepard, but... Who could the sister be? Oh, Sir Val! So she's Japard's older sister. She gave it some good thought. But whatever's going on in that Supreme Guardian's head... Even Branya might have trouble understanding. Sampo! Do you know the Landau siblings? Landau? Uh, yeah, we're all friends. I've mostly dealt with the younger brother in the past, but the sister? <laughs> She's much scarier. Uh, today's supposed to be a day of celebration, so let's not talk about it right now. We can set out at any time. Just come find me when you're ready. So now, after reading Bronius' letter and being tasked by her to talk to Serval and Gepard Landau, our time to go back to the surface is at hand, or at least it would be if it wasn't level locked. So now before we can speak with the Landau siblings, we must engage with the Equilibrium. Equilibrium. 
The worlds are already changing. For equilibrium reigns supreme. Rest assured, the trial of the equilibrium will find you. With the Equilibrium conquered and the Crimson Calyx unlocked, we had a lot of business to now attend to, so we got straight to work firstly by messaging Mr. Yang about the new Calyx, and after getting the all clear, proceeded to exhaust all our star rail fuel to farm up trace materials for our units. And with a healthy surplus of Harmony trace materials now sitting snug in our bag, we then proceeded to ascend Asta, Tingyin and Hanya to level 40 while also leveling up their light cones and traces as far as we possibly could. But that's not all. After returning to the Astral Express and talking to Pom Pom, we then unlocked the Forgotten Hall, and after attempting the first floor, and doing surprisingly well for our current power level, claimed the rewards and went to talk to Pom Pom to claim even more rewards. And with all that business taken care of, we head back to Boulder Town and tell Sampo that it's time to head out. Mother, I have returned. Rania, I thought, I thought I'd lost you. Where were you? Are, are you hurt? I'll fetch the butler right away. No, there's no need. I don't want to see Sebas right now. Sorry, Mother. I I'm fine, really. I just got into a few skirmishes down in the Underworld, but nothing I couldn't handle. The Underworld? Oh, I see. In that case, report everything you saw. Commander, Branya. After the failed pursuit at Backwater Pass, the Wanted Outsiders and I were somehow taken to the Underworld. Because of the difficult situation we were in, we formed a... temporary alliance to help the residents of the Underworld resolve a few issues of survival. We also defeated an ancient robot known as Svarog and learned some truths about the Stellaron. I'm listening. Go on. Madam Kakolia. It is my firm belief that the visitors from beyond the sky are not the villains we had imagined before. I witnessed them take up arms in the name of justice and risk their lives for the sake of others. I can also ascertain that they did come for the Stellaron, but only to relieve the disaster it has brought upon Bellabog. Mother, you've always known the truth about the Stellaron, haven't you? Well, the responsibility of bearing that truth will fall upon me one day. Such is the burden of being guardian, to carry these secrets for eternity. So, I ask you to forgive my defiance, but I believe that the order to dispatch the Outsiders was a mistake. To solve the problems brought on by the Stellar on the Architects waited hundreds of years, and those Outsiders may be the... the... Enough! Ignorant! Oh, you disappoint me, Branya. You merely glimpsed the tip of the iceberg, and now you think you know everything. You spend a short time with that underworld scum, and suddenly you have the audacity to question my orders? Guards! Take Branya. They are not scum! My entire life, everything you ever kept from me, I remember it clearly now. This time, this time I am standing my ground, Madam Guardian. And please, stop dismissing me with vague excuses. Tell me what you have seen, what exactly it is you are hiding. Why do you send the Silvermane Guards to die in the Fragmentum? 
Why have you abandoned the people of the underworld? And why? Why did you have that sudden change of mind? Huh. I see. I knew this moment would come sooner or later. I just... didn't expect it would be so soon. You want to know why I gave those orders? Is that right? Do you believe you're ready to learn the truth? Yes. I am ready. Mother. Then come with me, Branya. It is time you heard it. The voice of this dying world. After finally returning to the surface and March having a snack on the air and sunshine, we have a group meeting to decide whether the Landau siblings it is better to talk to first. And after deciding it's better to give Gepard a wide berth for now, we head on over to Serval's workshop to have a chat. Who is it? Shop's closed today. You'll have to come back tomorrow. Huh? Ah, I remember. The three outsiders. Wait, why are you still strolling around the city? Do you know the Silverman guards are looking all over for you? Quick, act natural and get inside. Don't get spotted! Alright, you'll be safe here. My workshop has pretty good soundproofing and barely anyone comes in. Just what crime did you commit, exactly? They recalled a bunch of guards from the front line to track you down. It's unprecedented. Now they're patrolling the whole city and everyone's in a panic! Oh, we just... Not yet, March. Branya said we could trust you completely. You mean to say you don't trust me completely? Good. That's smart of you. But you needn't worry. Kokolia and I aren't even on speaking terms. It was her that ejected me from the Architects. I refuse to stand with her. I don't believe you guys would do anything bad. And the Architects are going to need conclusive and publicly available evidence for me to think otherwise. Besides, I know the Architects, and if they did have any evidence, they would have released it by now. I know Kokolia's style. Get everyone into a frenzy first. Most people in a frenzy don't stop to ponder the details. Me? None. What Kokolia and the Architects get up to has nothing to do with me. My time is too precious for pondering. These days I just spend my time fixing things in this workshop and... playing music. It's a pretty carefree existence. If I'm not careful, I'll start boring you all with sob stories from the past. Let's get back to you guys. If Long Lost Branya told you to come here, you must have something important to tell me. You can trust me. I know our paths have only crossed once before, but my intuition tells me you guys are good people. And I've got good intuition, by the way. <laughs> Ooh, I'm the best storyteller. Let me, let me. Uh, try not to embellish the facts. So that's what's been happening. No wonder we hadn't heard from Branya recently. <sighs> After all these years in isolation and without a single word from below, this is what's become of the Underworld? I believe you. There's no way you could have invented all those twists and turns. What's more, we have Miss Zila here as living proof. As for the Stellaron, know why Branya got you to find me. When I was still one of the architects working in the scientific research division, I was researching the Stellaron. I never thought I'd hear that word again after being expelled by the architects. Come on, I'll tell you everything. 
Only a very few people in Bellabog know of the existence of the Stellaron. Those that do would never associate it with the Fragmentum or Eternal Freeze. But according to the data recorded in that robot, Svarog, the architects dug out the truth long ago. The research results were purposely hidden away to ensure that the outside world would never know of them. Just my luck. Out of all the research topics I could have chosen, I insisted on the Stellaron. It's clear now that anyone who wanted to get closer to the truth would have been expelled or abandoned. Maybe I should be thanking Kokolia. All she did was push me out. She could have decided to take a more permanent measure. <laughs> Jepard? Not a chance. He's a decent guy, but also famously uncompromising. For my brother, orders are more important than anything. Even if you stuck Branya's letter to his forehead, he wouldn't be swayed. You need to choose your words carefully if you want to persuade him of something. It might be best if I talk to him. Though, I'd need a strategy first. Yes. I never observed it directly, but I used lab simulations and outbound surveys to establish a rough location. According to the survey results, the Stellaron is likely to the north of Bellabog, somewhere in the vast snow plains. We must locate it as soon as possible, ideally before Kokolia takes action. Can you tell us the way? Not a problem. I was thinking the same thing. But I'm afraid telling you might not be enough. The area to the north of Bellabog has been more or less swallowed up by the Fragmentum. If you want to get to the northern snow plains, you'll need to get past the Silvermane Guard restricted zone on the front lines first. Even if you get past the restricted zone in one piece, you'll have a whole heap of Fragmentum to deal with. Yes, that's where the main force of the Silvermane Guards is stationed. They've consolidated their position there in order to resist the encroaching Fragmentum. It sounds like the three of us and Zila might not be enough. Why don't we go back underground and get Wildfire to come with us? I fear we may not have the time. Hey, enough pessimism. Back in my official capacity days, I spent a lot of time in the North. I got to know the soldiers and officers on the front line very well. This calls for brainwaves, not brawn waves. How about I take you over myself? Really? Great! Phew. It's less scary if someone you know is leading the way. <laughs> I want to see the Stellaron too, you know. It was my research topic for over a decade. You don't get that many decades in life. That's settled then. There's no time to lose. We should head out as soon as you're ready. It. I forgot my brother said he'd be around today. Find somewhere to hide, quick! I'll handle him. Japard! It's you! I didn't think you'd have the time to visit with things so tense on the front line. <laughs> the things are manageable. The latest wave of monster attacks has slowed. I'm back in the city to take care of a few matters, but I'll be back on the front line later. I thought I told you. Ah! Oh, yes. That's right. Sis, you look a bit pale. Did something happen? N no Why would anything have happened? You don't normally use my full name. You said you hate it when I call you bro in public. Well, I agree. It'd sound better if I started using your full name. Right, Brosif? You can call me whatever you like. Look, Serval, I'm here on official business today. There's something wrong with the barrier generator device, and the engineers in our unit don't know how to fix it. I need you to take a look. 
Those guys can't think outside the box. Of course they can't wrap their heads around my design. <sighs> I thought it was something big. Leave it here. I'll take a look. Sorry to trouble you. Why are you being so polite? Oh, and why is the city under curfew all of a sudden? Has something happened? I... I've been instructed to keep it quiet. Lil Jeppy. So grown up now, looking down on his civilian sister. Don't say that. Ah, forget it. If I don't tell you, Pela will. Last night, Lady Bronya suddenly appeared. She entered Klopoth Fort without saying anything to anyone. The Supreme Guardian is worried that the three intruders may have followed Bronya out of the Fragmentum and back into the administrative district. She issued a curfew for the entire city and ordered us to pursue and capture any suspicious individuals. Ah, so that's how it is. No wonder I haven't heard from Bronya. Is she all right? I'm not sure. She hasn't left Klopoth Fort. The Supreme Guardian just said she'd returned. Nothing more. <laughs> well, I was sure worried about her. After she disappeared, Pela's workload doubled. She said she barely had time to go out. She really does tell you everything. Oh, by the way, I left my Goethe Hotel limited edition flask behind last time I was here. Let me have a look for it. I think I left it over... Uh, wait! Hmm? What is it? You seem pretty off today, Serval. It's, um... Right! You remember how you neglected all those flowers to death? I piled them all over there during a bit of spring cleaning and now they smell terrible! So, don't go over there! Seems like a strange reason not to take a look. Plus, am I supposed to believe you were spring cleaning? You must be up to more forbidden research. Uh, am not! How dare you! What do you take your sister for? Never mind. This is your space, and I shouldn't intrude. I've got business to take care of. Bye for now. Uh, hey! Wait a sec. Uh, those intruders. I wanted to ask, what crime have they committed? They're plotting to overthrow the architects and bring harm to the city. Huh. Reminds me of the accusations against me. Kukulia's methods haven't changed. Don't say that, Serval. I know that you're still nursing a grievance against the Supreme Guardian. But this isn't a joking matter. You're telling me off again? Fine. Whatever, bro. You better be going. Come listen to Pela in my next rehearsal. I will, if I have the time. The coast is clear. You can come out now. What kind of plot device was that? I almost lost my cool when he went for his flask. This is bad. Branya's in danger. We have to go save her. Attempting to storm Klopoth Fort by ourselves? Forget it, Zila. I don't care how skilled you are, I'm not sending you on a suicide mission. Rest assured, Kokolia may have changed over the years, but she never hurt Branya. I'm certain of that. You sound like Branya herself. I don't get it. You guys are against Kokolia, and yet in some ways, you seem to trust her completely. I was gauging his reactions just now. Did you see? Unless we have irrefutable evidence, he won't question Kokolia's orders. If you go after him now, our plan's as good as over. Come on, let's go to the restricted zone. If we can get ahead of the curve and find the Stellaron, Kokolia will be out of options. After the numerous close calls in Serval's workshop, we finally head on over to the Silvermane restricted zone. And it is here that we will end the episode. 
Thank you so much for watching this episode of Harmony Only. Remember to take care and stay safe, and we'll see you next time.